Hi, my name is Angelo Cervone and I am an assistant professor in the Aerospace Engineering Faculty at Delft University of Technology. As you probably know, we are very active in the development of micropropulsion systems and in particular what we are developing now is water micro-resistojet thrusters for small satellites, CubeSats and PortiCubes. I will not explain in detail why we have chosen uh, this combination, so why we have chosen a resistor jet and why we have chosen water as propellant, because this is already explained in detail in our papers, in our presentations. What we are going to do today is to show you some of our recent developments, how we are developing the technology and what are the challenges we are facing in miniaturizing it at a very small level. And we will start by showing you our concepts. You see that we are using a traditional MEMS manufacturing technology in which we have a wafer and different several different thrusters in the same wafer and then it is cut to, uh, to, to produce the single thrusters and you can see here an example of uh, the two different concepts we are developing. This is uh, the liquid water micro resistor jet where you have a liquid flow of water uh, heated, vaporized and then accelerated in a nozzle and this one is what we call the low pressure micro resistor jet in which we have uh, uh, water vapor at very low pressure under rarefied conditions which flows uh, perpendicularly in this case to the thruster and goes through the very tiny slots that maybe you see here which are heated and so the molecules are uh, heated and accelerated in slots. And now our PhD Marcel will tell you more about how we are implementing these two concepts in a, a real thruster environment. Hi everyone, um, my name is Marcel. I'm a PhD student at the Space Engineering Department of TU Delft. And uh, as Angelo explained before uh, uh, about our thrusters, I'll now show some details of our devices, which are over here. So. These are the two interfaces we have, one for the vaporizing liquid micro-resistor jet and one for the low-pressure micro-resistor jet. In this case, uh, for the VLM, the vaporizing liquid, the thruster uh, chip goes inside of this interface where you can see the, 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 the dots there which are the pins to connect the, the heaters of the resistances. And in the back here we have both the sensor for the pressure and temperature and also the connection for the, the heaters. In, with this interface we can test the device in uh, normal conditions of pressure and temperature and also in the vacuum chamber. This other device is the interface for the LPM, the low pressure micro thruster, which you can see in this part here, that, that's the chip. And these are the connections for the heaters that are integrated in the chip. And this is the, the pressure sensor that we use. And in the back here, you see the connection, the fluidic interface. So uh, through this interface, the gas will be injected in the thruster and it will come out uh, in this direction. And here we have the two thrusters in more detail. This is the VLM. So if you check carefully, you can see the different parts of the thruster. Where I'm pointing here is the fluidic inlet where the water comes in. Then it's vaporized in this middle section. And in the last part is the nozzle which will expel the propellant to the space. And in the back side we have the heaters that are made of molybdenum. And they are used to vaporize the water, to heat up the water and vaporize it. And in this case this is the LPM and in this uh, the front face we can also see the heater the, these are the two pads for the heaters and the channels are etched through the wafer so it's you can see the holes the, the gas will come from the back side and it will exit in the front side so uh, what is our challenge for this year 2018 we are going to further miniaturize the system and the reason is that we want to use it on this satellite that gives an idea of the new generation of satellites uh, at which we are working here at TU Delft. This is called the pocket cube. It has a form factor of 5 by 5 by 5 centimeters. So you see 
This is uh, a one-to-one -one scale model. The satellite looks exactly like this. This is on one side a big challenge, on the other side it's a big opportunity for us because we are given the possibility of using our propulsion system as a demonstration payload on this satellite, at least for the first launches. This means that we don't have uh, any functional requirements for the propulsion system for uh, making the satellite work. We just install the propulsion system here and uh, check whether it works uh, in space as we are expecting it. What are our requirements for this demonstration payload? We have to fit the entire system, including all the components and the propellant, into a volume of 4 by 4 by 2 centimeters. That is more or less half a unit of this 3U rocket cube, into a mass of no more than 75 grams, with an average power for the whole satellite, uh, for all the subsystems of the satellite, of 1 watt when the satellite is in sunlight. How are we going to do this? Actually, our PhDs, Marcel and Dadoui, had a very good idea on a system that will allow us to demonstrate both the concepts that we have seen previously in the same demonstrator, in the same satellite. And this is an idea that will be presented now by Marcel, for which they have already filled uh, a patent application, because we really believe in this idea and we think it might have a future also for um, further miniaturized uh, micro-propulsion systems in satellites. So now I will show the concept that will demonstrate both uh, of our thrusters in this uh, pocket cube. So here we have the two devices, the, the two test prototypes, which are actually uh, very big compared to our pocket cube. But these are only the test prototypes. For the real flight models, the devices will be much smaller than this. And here you can see the concept of the tank, which is basically a tube that's shared by both devices. So in, inside of this tube, we will store the propellant, and the tube will be partially filled with gas, the pressure and gas, and partially filled with water, which is the liquid phase is used by the VLM, and the gaseous phase is used by the LPM. This tube, uh, in this case, is quite short, but for the flight model, we can increase the length of this tube, and it's a very narrow tube, so we can bend it and fold it and uh, place it wherever we, we want or wherever we have space inside the satellite, so we can better use the, the volume we have for the payload. And as we use both devices, the pressure inside this tube will drop uh, to a certain point where the performance of the VLM will decrease significantly. But it's still the performance of the LPM, the LPM will continue uh, at the same level, so we can use the whole range of pressure uh, that we have inside, the tube, inside of the tube. And I will show you a video explaining how this concept to fit inside the pocket cube. So now I'm going to show you a video to better explain our concept. This is our pocket cube and inside you can see both of our thrusters, the VLM in the right side and the LPM in the left side. This is the board to provide power and control both thrusters and this is our propellant tank that's going to be shared by both thrusters. The two things here are the valves to control each one and as you can see the tube is very narrow so we can fold it and bend it all around and uh, uh, fit all the spaces we have inside the payload so uh, we make better use of the space we have inside of the payload. This uh, very narrow tube also helps to solve a big problem with uh, thrusters which is the propellant sloshing. Because of the very narrow dimensions the water won't be mixing up with the gaseous phase, so we can make sure we keep both separated, the liquid phase and the gaseous phase. That's our concept for the pocket cube. Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, you can contact us by email. Thank you very much.